Hey guys, Dr. Desai here from Osmosis. I'm the Chief Medical Officer and it's great to see you guys again. I'm uh, excited. Today we're going to talk about something uh, pretty important to me. Uh, I say pretty important actually as I think about it, it's, it's actually extremely important. It's how people present themselves through oral communication. So how you're actually um, sharing a case, how you're describing a patient either to um, another physician, a nurse, maybe someone on the healthcare team. Um, but also how you think about uh, patients as well. So I'm going to give you three tips on how I think you can do uh, a really stellar job with your oral presentations uh, as you go, go through uh, your clinical practice. So uh, before I get started, I want to remind you, uh, it's really important to me that you like this uh, video, that you also leave a comment on a tip that you think is important uh, in terms of how to give a good oral presentation. My first tip, I have three, my first one is set expectations with the one-liner. Again, set expectations with your one-liner. So what's the one-liner? Well, that's like where you basically take an entire story and try to extract out the bits that you think are most relevant for a person to, to hear. So I'm gonna give you some examples. The first example is a three-year-old with cough and fever for four days. And what you want to do with that one-liner is you want to provoke some thoughts, right? So if I say uh, a three-year-old with cough and fever for four days, what sort of thoughts should be jumping in your head? You know, for me, as a pediatric infectious disease doctor, I think, oh, viral pneumonia. Like, that's the most common thing in a three-year-old that's had cough and fever for four days. What if I changed it to three-year-old with cough and fever for four weeks? So all I've changed is instead of three days or four days, it's four weeks. Well, now I'm thinking... No, this is not a viral pneumonia. This is more likely to be what? Maybe pertussis. Maybe it's uh, a tuberculosis. Maybe it's a really bad bacterial pneumonia. Maybe it's uh, foreign body aspiration. You know, anything like that would last for much longer. And so again, you know, just changing that four days to four weeks really dramatically changes what I'm thinking. And so what, what I want with your one-liner is to kind of set expectations for the kinds of things people should be thinking about in their heads. Let me give you another example, and this is across time. So instead of like the initial presentation, let's say I give a one-liner uh, maybe a little bit later. So here's another one. A three-year-old with a right middle lobe pneumonia on antibiotic day four of seven. Well, now you say, okay, this is not someone that's just coming in. This is someone that's already been admitted, so they're probably pretty sick, and then they had a right middle lobe pneumonia, so presumably they had a chest x-ray or a chest CT, and they're on antibiotics, so we think it's bacterial, and they're on day four of seven. So I'm guessing they may be over the worst of it. Maybe the first three days were really bad. And hopefully as I go to see this patient, they're kind of on the mend, maybe getting a little bit better, I would hope. Uh, maybe still having fevers, but hopefully not as high. I would assume I'm ready to see a patient that's maybe getting better, but was pretty sick. Now, what about this? Right, a three-year-old status post right middle of pneumonia three weeks ago here for follow-up. Now that's a different one-liner. I'm expecting, okay, this patient is totally well, should be really happy, uh, I'm guessing they're outpatient, and um, I'm hoping that there are no residual symptoms, that they're totally fine, back to school, eating well, mom thinks that they're doing great, dad thinks that they're doing great, you know, that sort of story. So that's what you do with your one-liner. Again, your, the first tip is set expectations with the one-liner. Make sure that the person's thinking what you want them to think in terms of what the patient is doing. Number two, present a story. Now, tip number two for an oral presentation, you want to present a story. The first one was set expectations with your one-liner, but then if you're going to double-click and someone's like, no, tell me the full story, tell me what's going on, present this case, then you want to make sure you tell it as a story, meaning use chronology, use time order, and make sure it flows naturally, that there's cause and then effect. So I'm going to give you a quick example, and, and I'm not going to tell you the diagnosis. A 55-year-old man who started noticing intermittent episodes of knee pain starting about a year ago. The episodes were happening about every month or so, and each one was excruciatingly painful, making it really hard to sleep. Even leaving a bed sheet on the knee made the pain worse. They were triggered by sitting for long periods of time, and especially when he was dehydrated and not drinking a lot of water. The pain was triggered by certain foods, like eating meat, and would improve when he ate lots of vegetables and fruits, particularly cherries. The pain would last for a few days and would slowly improve day by day. So what does that diagnosis sound like to you. Understanding that this is a story. I'm telling a narrative. I'm telling it from the patient's perspective. There are certain features I, I threw in there, right? Like it improves with cherries. Uh, he's dehydrated. It's excruciatingly painful. Even having a bed sheet was really painful. So you really get a good sense of kind of 
the, the extremis and the, and the pain that this person is feeling and that it's happening kind of recurrently. It's in bouts. It comes and it goes, lasting a few days at a time. But it's been lasting for about a year. So those are all key pieces to figure out what's going on. But again, you want to tell it as a story. You don't want pieces kind of jumbled around and out of place. Number three, and this is something I rarely, rarely ever hear, but remember the end of the story. So what I mean by that is a lot of times people tell the story, but then they don't usually take the time to kind of look it up, look up how things ended. So for example, uh, how is that patient doing that was in critical care, you know, a month later, two months later? Uh, are they doing well? Are they back to school? Are they healthy? Are they happy? Are they having ongoing, you know, psychiatric problems? Are they having ongoing uh, challenges readjusting to, to their life at home? Uh, what is it like in terms of stigma? Maybe it's a patient that had a, a stoma. You know, is it weird having that? Are they having trouble making friends? All those things as a person readjusts to their life back home. As a medical student, you oftentimes uh, or even as a resident, think about people just acutely, you know, as they get sick. But of course, these people re-enter society, re-enter their life. And in terms of oral presentations, I can't tell you how valuable it is to me when a med student or resident says, hey, you know what? I followed up on that patient that we discharged a month ago, and I just called them at home, and they're doing really well. Or I saw them in clinic again, and they actually got readmitted for whatever. You know, to me, that's the last part of the story. And I know in oral presentations, we usually don't uh, think of that. We just say, okay, well, what, is, what's happened, what happened and then what's happening now? But, but there is a third part of the story, which is the end of the story. So I want you to kind of remember that and, and do due diligence and look that part up because it'll help you as a physician to make sure you understand the full arc of what happens to people. And so that the next patient you see that has, you know, that story I presented was gout that has terrible gout, you can say, you know what? We had a patient with gout, a 55 year old man, terrible knee pain, ended up being gout, and we treated him, and he ended up doing really well. Actually, long-term, did very well, didn't have any problems. Uh, that could be true for you as well. So it, I really encourage you, again, the three, the three tips, set expectations with your one-liner, present a story when you're presenting orally, and then go back and look things up, and then share that story with people. Let people know, oh, that patient, ended up doing really well, or that patient ended up getting readmitted, so that people understand the end of the story as well. And that's important. I'd love to see what comments and tips you have. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Start your free trial today at osmosis.org.